Delta Force, also known as the Special Forces Operational Detachment Delta, is the most elite tactical combat group in the US military. This Tier 1 Special Mission Unit is so secretive, it's not officially acknowledged by the US government or military. Created in 1977 by U.S. Army Colonel Charles Beckwith in response to the rise of terrorist ideologies, Delta Force recruits operators from all military branches based on their unique skills. And they're trained to the highest level, armed with the most advanced weaponry. But what sets them apart is, well, you'll find out in a moment. Hey there, curiosity explorers. Ready for another dive into the unknown? This is your host Caesar, and I'm here with the vibrant Sonia, who's got her thinking cap on. Hi everyone. Can't wait to delve into today's topic with you all. It's going to be a thrilling ride. As always, don't forget to subscribe to Curiosity Wonderland, comment, and share. Let's imbibe the spirit of learning and curiosity together. Delta Force, known to some as the Special Forces Operational Detachment Delta, is no ordinary military force. This is a special mission unit, a tier 1 unit under the Joint Special Operations Command, or JSOC. So, they are not regular soldiers? Precisely. They are not called soldiers, but Delta operators. They are said to forego the traditional philosophies of military life, often working in civilian clothes. Working for who? They work for whoever needs them, it can be the Army, the FBI, or even the CIA. The group is so secretive that neither the US government nor the military officially acknowledges its existence. So, all this information is unofficial? That's right. Much of what we know is based on vague references by the government and stories that have leaked out over time. And despite their secrecy, the group has been the subject of some scrutiny, like in 1993, when Delta Force operators were among those who fought and died in an operation to remove a Somali warlord. That's tense. So, are they like mercenaries? That's a controversial question. They're highly trained and operate outside the traditional military structure. But at the same time, they're believed to be answerable only to one person. And who would that be? That's part of the mystery. We'll unravel it as we delve further into the world of the Delta Force. Going back to the 70s, the world began to see an upsurge in extremism. To combat this, the U.S. Army proposed the creation of a small, skilled tactical team capable of responding quickly and decisively to terrorist activities. And that's how Delta Force was born? Yes, in 1977, Colonels Charles Beckwith and Thomas Henry assembled the force, recruiting from elite military groups like the Green Berets, the Army Rangers, and the Airborne Divisions. Well, so it's like an all-star team. You could say that. Beckwith created a grueling training course, modeling it after the British Special Air Service, an elite commando unit. Even today, the two groups maintain a close relationship and regularly participate in cross-training programs. So, what does it take to be a part of Delta Force? The standards are incredibly high. For instance, it's said that recruits must show 100% accuracy in shooting from 600 yards and 90% accuracy at 1,000 yards. That's quite the feat. Absolutely, and that's not all. Beckwith also created a 40-mile hike as an endurance test to separate the truly capable from those who just managed to hang on through training. I can see why their operations are so effective. Indeed, yet their activities have sparked some controversy, given that they operate within the fringe of conventional military laws and are funded from secret government accounts, away from the public eye. Some argue that their lack of restrictions and accountability is necessary to maintain the United States' role as a leading power and as the world's police force. Delta Force is composed of various squadrons, each with their specialties. The combat squadrons, named A, B, and C, consist of smaller units called troops that specialize in different types of insertion airborne, ground, or water. So there's a high degree of specialization within the group? Yes, and it goes even further. These troops can split into small mission teams, ranging from a single operator up to 12 people. That's a lot of flexibility. What about combat tactics? Well, as counter-terrorist operatives, Delta Force members receive training in hostage rescue in closed spaces. Interestingly, when they rescue hostages, the hostage takers are rarely left alive. That sounds intense. It is. The group's training facility, sometimes referred to as the House of Horrors, is believed to be quite elaborate. 
It includes mock-ups of various settings like buses, trains, and even a passenger airliner for staging hostage rescue scenarios. And what about their equipment? The arsenal available to Delta Force is said to be limitless. They have access to the best weaponry in the world, often heavily customized. Not only that, but they also have at their disposal aircraft that are painted and outfitted to appear like civilian helicopters. That's a serious level of dedication to covert operations. It certainly is. The level of plausible deniability created by operators invading in civilian clothing, using seemingly civilian aircraft, is incredibly high. Over the years, Delta Force has been involved in numerous operations. One of their earliest assignments was guarding the Pan American Games in Puerto Rico in 1979. However, their next operation, known as Eagle Claw, ended in failure. What happened during Operation Eagle Claw? The goal was to rescue 66 American hostages at the embassy in Tehran, Iran. Unfortunately, a helicopter carrying Delta Force and other special operations team members crashed, resulting in the death of eight people and the premature end of the operation. That must have been a devastating blow. It was. After that, control of Delta Force was taken out of the hands of traditional Special Operations Command. However, they carried out at least one notable successful operation when they boarded a hijacked Indonesian passenger plane in 1980, rescuing the hostages and neutralizing all four hijackers. That's quite a turnaround. What other kinds of operations do they undertake? Delta Force has participated overtly alongside the military in major invasions carried out by the United States. For example, in Granada, during Operation Urgent Fury, they stormed a prison to release hostages, and in Panama, they rescued an American CIA operative and assisted in capturing President Manuel Noriega. So, they're not just a counter-terrorist outfit? Correct. They can also carry out operations on behalf of other military branches and agencies, like the CIA's Special Activity Staff. Perhaps one of their most widely known operations is the Great Scud Hunt during Operation Desert Storm in the year of 1991, where they infiltrated hundreds of miles into Iraq, located Iraqi Scud missiles, marked them as targets for American fighter jets, and eliminated Scud launching crews. That's an impressive range of operations. Members of Delta Force have also taken on other roles such as serving as bodyguards for General Norman Svartskop during Desert Storm in Iraq. And then there's a unique case involving the Posse Comitatus Act of 1878. I'm not familiar with that, can you explain? The Posse Comitatus Act was designed to create a clear division between the military and domestic police forces in the United States, outlawing any direct involvement by the military in law enforcement operations. But there are instances where this act can be temporarily repealed through a waiver signed by the president in cases of emergency. This has occurred at least twice with Delta Force. Really? In what situations? In the late 80s, President Ronald Reagan waived the Posse Comitatus Act during an uprising in a federal penitentiary by Cuban refugees in Atlanta, Georgia. Reagan ordered a unit of Delta Force operators to subdue the uprising. And in 1993, the act was again waived by President Bill Clinton during a standoff in Waco, Texas between an armed religious sect known as the Branch Davidians and the FBI. Delta Force operators were allowed at the site of the standoff. That's fascinating. They really do play a wide range of roles. Absolutely. And it's not just in these high-stakes scenarios. Delta Force members have worked alongside the FBI for security details at events such as the Olympic Games held in American cities. It's fascinating to see how this group flexibly navigates between military operations and domestic crises. I can't help but reflect on how incredible this world of curiosities and records is. So many discoveries, so many facts. It's all so wild. What do you think, my audience? Are you enjoying the content? Have you ever imagined the extent of the tasks carried out by elite groups like Delta Force? Share your thoughts with us, won't you? We love hearing from you. And if you're enjoying this deep dive, don't forget to hit the like button. We're relishing these discoveries and we hope you are too. Of course, being such a secretive and high-stakes outfit, Delta Force isn't without its share of scandals, speculations, and rumors. That's inevitable with any organization shrouded in mystery. Absolutely. For instance, in 2004, reports surfaced that a secret prison operated by Delta Force members was located at the Baghdad airport. This prison, reserved only for insurgents and terrorists, was allegedly the setting for torture methods like near-drowning and smothering. That's quite a serious allegation. 
Yes, it is. And in 1985, Time magazine reported that several Delta Force operators had to be cleared to leave the country after they were dispatched to a hostage rescue mission in Sicily. They were under investigation for allegedly embezzling and misappropriating money from a secret fund that supports the group. That certainly paints a different picture of the operations. And then there's the speculation that Delta Force operators were the ones who killed Colombian drug kingpin Pablo Escobar. While the group is known to have been in Colombia when Escobar was gunned down, its members served as trainers for a Colombian counter-drug squad, the Search Bloc. The Colombian government claims it was the Search Bloc that fired the shots that killed Escobar. So many rumors and questions, it seems. Indeed. It's a curious world out there. As we delve deeper into the mysterious operations of Delta Force, we find that the line between fact and fiction isn't always clear. Perhaps that's the nature of such covert operations. What do you think? As we continue to navigate through the labyrinth of Delta Force's operations, it's important to remember how difficult it is to separate fact from fiction. After all, the group operates in the shadows, away from the public eye. That's true, the covert nature of their operations fuels speculation. But one thing is certain, Delta Force has had a significant impact on numerous high-stakes situations around the world. Their missions have been vital in some of the most critical situations, even if we don't hear about all of them. Yes, their work is largely unseen by the public, but the results are undeniable. And as we near the end of our deep dive into the world of Delta Force, I wonder what other mysteries and curiosities are out there, tucked away in the shadows. It's a tantalizing thought, isn't it? So, today we've ventured into the enigmatic world of Delta Force, America's most elite tactical combat group. From their inception in 1977, their participation in critical operations globally, to the shroud of rumors and allegations surrounding them. It's been a journey into the shadows, where fact and fiction blur, creating an aura of mystery that only adds to the allure of Delta Force. Absolutely. It's been a fascinating ride. We've seen how Delta Force operators are chosen from the best of the best, trained to the highest standard, and equipped with state-of-the-art weaponry. They operate under the radar, carrying out covert missions that require stealth, precision, and a level of risk most of us can't even imagine. And in the end, the shadowy figure that emerges is a testament to human courage, skill, and dedication to a cause greater than oneself. It's like something out of a spy novel, isn't it? Couldn't agree more. We hope you found this episode as intriguing as we did. If you did, don't forget to blast that like button, share your thoughts in the comments, and share this episode with your friends. Let's keep the curiosity alive. Indeed, keep the questions coming, folks. Who knows what our next adventure will be? That's all we have for today, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Yes, thank you all for your time. Remember, there's always something new to learn, so stay curious. Goodbye for now, and take care. Goodbye. This wealth of information on Delta Force came from an article titled What is Delta Force, the Super Secret Military Group by Josh Clark, published on the How Stuff Works site on November 1, 2023. The full URL is in the video description if you want to delve deeper into the subject, alright? Now I'm off.